What's going on guys? You join me today in Woodstock. I'm at the water treatment plant because this is where the alerter is. And way over yonder, it looks like we've got some company. We've got a cop just sitting there. And it's not even time for the test yet. So it isn't even after the test and we've already got police here. Another another enthusiast said that she had police questioning after she recorded this siren. So guess we'll just see what happens. I'm going to step out of the vehicle. Uh, yeah, I'm going to step out of the vehicle right now and see if he comes up. Put my headphones on. Kind of sus that uh, that he's right here, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Probably looking right at me, but I'll just keep this rolling. There's the alerter. Just walking in whatever snow remains from the snowstorms last month. And it's pretty cold this morning too. But not as cold as yesterday. I tried to come here yesterday just for a growl. No luck. So tis a bummer. But no big deal because I'm here for the test today. Um a little bit of history on this particular alerter. It's 812 port, so it's one of the earlier first gen alerters. The rotating mechanism is different than the second gen alerters. So believe it or not, although this spins counterclockwise, it's reverse wired. But from what I've been told, the 812 rotors, although they look directional, actually aren't. So it doesn't matter if these are reverse wired or not. That's interesting. But yep, about two minutes before the test. So I'll tell you a little bit more about this alerter after the test and I know what you guys are thinking it's a p10 well I'm here to tell you it's not so yeah this is an alerter all right so I'm back in the car it is now post test it was pretty loud for being reverse wired so I guess what I've been told is correct it really doesn't matter which way the 812 spin because they look directional but looks can be deceiving because they had straight veins as opposed to back curve finning, which ACA refers to it as on the 912 rotors and the, as well as the eight port rotors, as well as, um, let's see, the 812 rotors for the P50 and Cyclone sirens. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting learning about um, earlier alerters and whatnot. But yeah, it was a pretty good test. Um, but yeah, more on the history of this, it, uh, as I've said, is not a P10. This is an alerter. The original shroud for the alerter was damaged in a storm in the 1990s, and Fulton replaced the alerter shroud with a P10 shroud because they couldn't find an alerter shroud for it, and they had a heavy supply of or a big surplus of P10 horns. So they faded that to that, uh, to this alerter. Another thing you'll notice is that this siren has a larger or wider rotator plate than a second gen alerter or P10 or P15, whatever. So also the motor seems to be running at a lower speed than normal. I'm gonna guess that's either because that was also a result of the storm or it's running on 208 volts, which as you guys know, 
for three phase motors, they don't spin as fast on 208 as they do on 240 or 480. But, yep, I guess that's why these earlier alerters did not have rotation stickers. Because the 812, although it looks directional, I just learned yesterday that it isn't. So, yeah, it's, it was quite a big mystery, but I'm glad it's solved. So that's it for this episode of Tornado Siren Adventures. Catch you on the next one. All right, so kind of sort of snaked you guys. The video's not quite over yet. As you can see, it's much later in the day, and I'm back home. And that's because, well, I didn't quite know what exactly I was going to say in the second half of this episode of Tornado Siren Adventures, but I'm going to say it now because I forgot to... And I also didn't want to block the right turn lane, which is where I was sitting for the second half of the video. Because, well, just in case anyone from the water treatment plant came by, I didn't want to block them from being able to turn right. Of course, they could have gone around me, but, you know, it's just not my thing blocking lanes and whatnot. So, as far as uh, the cop, I found out from another siren enthusiast that that particular police officer likes to monitor the test each month. And I did not know that because I thought he was going to come talk to me and ask me why I am near the siren or at the water treatment plant. Well, that's because I'm a siren enthusiast and I like to film sirens. Now, of course, he never got out of his car to talk to me or he never drove up to talk to me. So, yeah, it could be that that police officer is a siren enthusiast too and it may very well be that he is the same police officer that questioned the female siren enthusiast that went um sometime last year i think it was in august maybe september i don't remember so excuse my short memory but anyway the original plan was for me to set my ion pathfinder off in a three minute alternating whale now of course i found a new sound it's basically a makeshift um, MCP panel that Siren Dude 1003 uploaded to Scratch. I'll have the link for that in the description of this video if you guys want to check it out. It has alert, attack, alternating steady, which is high-low, pulse steady, pulse whale, and alternating whale. And then there are chimes as well. So that's pretty cool. What I ended up doing, though, is at noon sharp, I set this off in Westminster chimes only, followed by voice. I was planning on doing, like, one cycle of alternating whale, but I didn't want to alarm neighbors because it was two hours after the test, or should I say the tornado drill, because today was the day of the statewide tornado drill. And, yeah, despite being... The day of the statewide tornado drill, as I said, I didn't want to alarm residents into thinking there's an actual tornado or other emergency, because that's what I use this for. I use it for mainly severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings, but I use two different signals for each. I use attack for severe thunderstorm warnings and alternating whale for tornadoes. But usually if I stay home to test, I will use the alert and attack signals but usually 30 seconds to a minute each. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I do from now on. If I want to test this after 10 o'clock on a Tuesday, or first Tuesday of the month, I will do Westminster Chimes and Voice. It's kind of like how North Central College does it. They do Westminster Chimes and Voice on their DSAs. As far as I know, they've got four DSAs. Two of them are on the football stadium, and then the other two are on Carnegie Hall. Hopefully I can talk to, like, campus safety or whoever controls the sirens there and see if I can, like, do alternating whale for, like, 30 seconds on the next test day. That'd be pretty cool. So I'd have to talk with uh, the campus safety department or email them. But, yeah. That's pretty much all for this episode, other than the fact that I want to mention that uh, the first gen alerters had a different rotating mechanism, which rotates the siren in the opposite direction. 
that the chopper spins. So that being said, the alerter I went to today was reverse wired, but you know, as I've said earlier, from what I've been told by MN underscore sirens on Discord just yesterday, it really doesn't matter because the veins are straight as opposed to uh, having back curve finning like the 912 choppers that ACA started making in 1972, as well as the 8-port choppers, along with uh, the choppers for the Hurricane and then the Cyclone and P-50. All those had back curve finning, but the first gen alerters, the... 812 port ratio was ACA specific, so that's why I thought it was directional, and it looked directional, but then again, looks can be looks can be deceiving. But the 1012 and 912 earlier iterations were federal signal choppers, and you can tell just by hearing it, and you can also tell by looking at it. And I saw two videos, one of both the uh, 1012 and a 912 by MN underscore sirens and he zoomed in on the chopper at the end and I noticed that on the 1012 one the siren was rotating clockwise but the chopper was rotating counterclockwise and so I was thinking wow this just revealed a whole new mystery so then that's when I thought oh the 812 alerter in Woodstock is reverse wired but yeah, I haven't called it into Fulton yet. I don't know if I will, because if it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter, and they're getting good coverage from it, because, as I've said, it doesn't matter, and it'll be equally as loud, despite looking directional. So, that's what I wanted to say. I didn't have real, I didn't really have time to say it. I couldn't come up with what to say or how to word it. It is kind of confusing to understand if you don't know this stuff, but... You know, once you do know this stuff, it's pretty straightforward to understand. Take care and have a nice day.